All right, so what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna show you a few ways to create uh, drum sounds with operator. Uh, the reason why it could be interesting to create drums with a synthesizer is you have much more control over what you do than if you use samples and you can come up with results which are different from, well, samples. So the first thing I'd like to do is creating a classical 808 style bass drum with operator. And so I have a drum rack here and on node T3 I have the operator with the default waveform which is just a boring sine wave, this one. And the first thing we do, we switch this to a fixed frequency and say it's 70 hertz, which is a bit closer to the fundamental of our bass drum. And we have the 70 hertz wave. And we create an envelope which is a bit closer to a bass drum. And now we already have something which gets closer. At the bottom, there's this loop um, mode chooser here. And this can be used to create looping envelopes, which we don't need for our drum. But the last setting is trigger. And trigger means the envelope ignores the note off event and just when a note on comes in, creates the desired curve. So now we get this decay curve independently on how long we hit the key. And this is exactly what we want for our drum. Um, the next thing we'd like to do is we'd like to apply a short pitch envelope because um, if you hit a membrane with a stick, you get at the beginning um, a transient with a little bit higher pitch because the tension of the membrane is higher. So we emulate this with the pitch envelope here and um, see how far we get. And there we are already very close to the classical 808 bass drum and now we can adjust the frequency and so this was the fastest possible way to create a bass drum and now we can get a little bit more advanced um, the one thing is at the um, point of the impact of the drumstick we'd like to have a little bit more irregular sounds going on so we use FM synthesis um, Basically, we use the second oscillator in the operator to modulate the first one with an even shorter envelope, also setting to trigger, and we see what happens. And we got some different flavor of drum. I don't want to have the pitch envelope on the second one, so I turn this off here. So, and we notice that we get some different um, texture at the beginning. Uh, another parameter which is very essential for drums is the phase, which means um, the moment in the sine wave which uh, happens at the beginning of a note. And this is this parameter down here. If phase is set to zero, then the sine wave starts at the zero crossing, so it makes a curve like that. If we raise phase, we start going further and further to the top of the wave, so we get a really hard, nasty click at the beginning. But this is exactly what we might want here. So let's try this. And now we have a <coughs> bass drum with a much um, more precise click. And we experiment with the second wave here a little bit. And we already have quite some control over the sound of our bass drum. Now I like to do something which I didn't rehearse before. Um, usually a membrane has more than one um, frequency. It's, um, it's a complex uh, layering of several modes of movement of the bass drum, of the membrane. So I'd like to add a second um, waveform here to see if we get this bass drum a little bit more like a really a drum. So I changed the <clears throat> the algorithm of operator here to this one, which allows to have two independent chains. And the first thing I do is I copy the settings from oscillator A to oscillator C, copy from oscillator A. So 
And now nothing changes apart from the fact that this should be louder. But what we can do now is we can change the, the tuning of the second um, sine wave and see what happens. And make envelope shorter. And suddenly we have a drum sound which is a little bit less than 808 sound. I turn it off. So, and there's much room for experiment here. Uh, interesting enough, we didn't use any filtering here. Um, this is just the result of FM synthesis. So let me apply a little bit of a filtering to get rid of some of the high frequencies. And um, you got the idea. So we have the bass drum now. Let's use a similar approach to create a hi-hat. Uh, no, a snare first. So I grab the operator. Oops, now I made a mistake. Thanks for undo. Here we go. Let's see if we did it. Yeah. I grab another instance of operator. And now here we have the preset again. And we build a snare. Similar approach. We have a fixed frequency in trigger mode and a decaying envelope. And we tune this a little bit higher, let's say 140 hertz. So this is the fundamental of our snare. And we change the algorithm to this one here. And this one means, um, no, actually we choose this one again for reasons I show you later. So, oops, so we have this here. This is not really a snare because what's missing is the noise. And I use the noise waveform in operator to modulate the first oscillator. And we need the envelope here also. And this one needs to decay. So we have already a very rough snare here. Um, the interesting thing with the noise waveforms in operator is there's two of them. There's noise looped and noise wide. Noise wide is the classical um, constant random number flow which creates, well, noise. And noise looped is actually a small segment of randomness repeated ever and ever again, over and over again. And therefore it's not real noise, but uh, it has some properties you can't have with real noise. For instance, you can tune it. So let's see what this does if I tune it. Oops. So that's our <coughs> old analog snare. Um, I like to make it a little bit more convincing. So I again add a pitch envelope here for the same reason as for the bass drum. and play with the tuning a little bit. And with the decay. And we're getting closer. And now I do the following. I again copy the first operator oscillator to the third one, because again, I want to have more than one um, piece of the membrane. Oops. So we're getting there. Um, next thing I'd like to do here is I'd like to EQ the snare a little bit. And there's <clears throat> several ways how to can think about EQ. In this context, I like to think um, of the EQ as actually a resonance within the drum. Because if you have a drum, well, it's a small unit which creates a um, resonance because it's a small, well, resonating space. And so the resonances within the drum contribute to the sound. And in this case, I like to use two bands of the EQ8 
to enhance a few of the harmonics which I find interesting. So first I get more um, high frequencies. Here we go. And second is I try to get some of the mid frequencies a little bit more um, in the front. And we're getting there. So this for the snare, um, there's a different approach to the snare, which is more the, the classical 808 approach. This one uses noise for modulating the other oscillator, which is, uh, yeah, a FM synthesis approach. But <clears throat> in the classical Roland world, there is no FM synthesis. So instead of, I just use, so this is my membrane without noise. This is with noise, modulating oscillator A. And now I have another noise waveform here, where I choose the classical white noise, and again an envelope, and um, and you notice this sounds much brighter and it's much closer to the sounds you're familiar with from the analog drum computers. A last parameter which I really like uh, in Operator is the time parameter. Time scales all envelopes at the same time. So we can use this to make everything um, decaying longer or shorter. Let's try this. So this should be my snare for today. And now we do something a little bit more advanced. There's many ways to do a hi-hat. Um, the simplest thing of the hi-hat is a high pass filtered noise. So I wanted to do something else, but just for being complete, I do a quick hi-hat with not much to it. So the quick hi-hat is simply white noise and finally using the filter. I use the 24 dB high pass filter and um, a nice decaying envelope and so hi-hat was simple and maybe we have the and here I don't use the trigger mode actually here I use the normal mode because the normal mode allows me to do open and closed hi-hat kind of But of course, if you want to do real open closed hi-hat, then we need to be a bit more advanced. And um, you can figure out by yourself how this works. So here's our short hi-hat. So the last drum sound I like to do in this very quick and dirty um, drum kit assignment is a clap. And the Roland clap is a smart one. If you look at the waveform, you notice that the Roland clap has an attack, an initial sound which has a decay, and then comes another sound with a decay, another sound with a decay, another one, and a fifth one with a longer decay. And what this implies is the Roland clap is not one single clap, it's basically five people clapping. And the operator has four oscillators. And the envelopes have a nice feature which um, allows us to recreate the Roland clap simply within one operator if we omit one of the people clapping. So our Roland clap has only four people clapping. So we use this algorithm here, which is basically all four oscillators going out at the same time. And we use white noise just as a simple starting point. And we copy this and we take a decaying envelope. So we have now, yeah, that's our um, clap, which is for now uh, unfiltered version of the hi-hat. And 
I copy this to all the other oscillators. Copy oscillator to all others. So now we have four of those exactly at the same time. But what we want to do is we want to um, align them in time. So we use um, the trigger mode. Actually, we should use trigger mode for all of them. So I copy them again. So now trigger mode is on all of them. And on the second one, I use the attack time as a basically pre-delay and use the <clears throat> release as, well, release. So in the trigger mode, what happens now is during the attack phase, nothing happens. And then I got a spike and a decay. And that's exactly what I need for my um, clap. Oops, where is it? So now you notice they're 136 milliseconds apart. First sound, silence, second sound. And I bring them closer to, to together. Oops. Now they are 40 seconds apart, which is approximately what the Roland uh, 808 does. Then make the first one a bit shorter. And we almost have our first clap. And I take the other oscillator, do the same game, spread it um, something like 80 milliseconds apart. Um, oops. And we're starting to get there. And I use the fourth one. Same game. And again, 30 milliseconds apart. So this is something like 120 milliseconds. So that's our first clap here. Um, and now we can start, of course, doing detail stuff. Um, but I, what I like to do is I like to filter it differently. So again, we use the EQ8 to get this a little bit more according to taste. We cut off, oops, cut off the low frequencies. And we have something which is more. So now comes the fun part. The last clap, oops, the last clap at the Roland um, 808 decays longer than the rest. And this is a very, very smart move. Let's try this. Because actually, it does something which is similar to reverb. We have a clap which has some built-in reverb, which actually is really close to reverb because we have noise, and the noise is bouncing back from the walls. And what comes back is noise with a lot volume decay. Um, it's filtered a little bit differently in nature, but for a first approximation, it's totally acceptable. So we have a snare with some uh, a clap with some noise, which is room. So I turn it off, no reverb. I turn it on, reverb. Pretty cool, simple trick. So. Um, this is my little lecture in drum design with operator and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.